Is there an unspoken risk of ongoing acid blocker use? Well, today we're going to talk about that, and I want to give you some perspective on when is too long when it comes to acid blocker use, and more importantly, what it is that the risk is actually associated with. So as we begin this conversation today, acid blocker use is a common recommendation. Uh, it's a common prescription. You can even pick these up over the counter. And when individuals are dealing with heartburn, this is often what they turn to. Or if they've been told that they have an infection in their stomach, they will often reach for, uh, as part of the overall treatment protocol, acid blockers are often part of that protocol. And while they may be an attribute in the short term, there are some concerns that we need to discuss when it comes to the long-term use of acid blockers. And this is really the key difference here is the duration of use with these. Uh, this is a group of uh, medications that is meant to be used on a short-term basis. And it's not meant to be used long-term here. And I'll give you some more specifics on that as the data and the risk that I'm relating this to come into play. So one of the primary risks that is linked to ongoing acid blocker use, proton pump inhibitors, H2 agonists, these are some of the categories here. One of the primary risks associated with this is the development of what's known as small intestinal bacterial overgrowth. And acid by nature is a defense line in our gastrointestinal tract. So as we swallow different organisms just through the natural process of ingestion and digestion. When we swallow those organisms, they go down the esophagus, they reach the stomach, and the presence of acid reduces that microbial burden such that we don't see a proliferation of different bacteria and organisms that are increasing in the small intestine, which is an area that shouldn't be heavily uh, populated with different microorganisms. Yes, there's some there, but there shouldn't be this abundance of organisms there. Well, when you take the acid level down, there can become an abundance of these organisms. The other thing that happens with that reduction of acid is that you need acid to ultimately trigger the release of enzymes from your pancreas. And so we don't see an efficient release of pancreatic enzymes, which are also part of this defense line that I'm talking about. All these things are going to open the door for this overgrowth of bacteria in the small intestine. There is a multitude, there are a multitude, let me say that, let me use correct English. There are a multitude of um, consequences that are associated with the presence of an overgrowth of bacteria in the small intestine. But in short, let me frame it this way for you. When you look at that overgrowth, the resources that you're ingesting as part of your diet are you're competing with those organisms for those resources. So when there's too many of these organisms present, they're taking those resources, the nutrients, the, the micronutrients, vitamins, minerals, things of this nature, and they're using those before you have full access to them. So you end up getting shortchanged and many times you end up with nutrient deficiencies as a result of that. I'll come back to that in just a moment. Uh, the other problem here is that when these organisms start to proliferate in the small intestine, they can lead to a sequela of events that can be promoting of chronic disease. So not really the topic of this video, but there is quite a bit of evidence showing links to numerous different chronic diseases out there when it comes to overgrowth of bacteria in the small intestine. Now I said I'd come back to those nutrient deficiencies. And when it comes to the acid blocker use, many nutrient deficiencies manifest from this. And this needs to be part of the thought process that if I have to go on an acid blocker, I need to, I need to remediate these deficiencies that have likely been induced. And many times these deficiencies are the ones that come along with with uh, protein related foods. So the proteins themselves, so protein maldigestion, but we also see things like B12, zinc, selenium, phosphorus. Uh, those are some of the iron. Those are some of the more common deficiencies that we would anticipate to see if there is an ongoing use here with these acid blockers. Now, let me back up to SIBO, to the small intestinal bacterial overgrowth for a minute. And the reason I want to do that is to give you perspective on 
what you would anticipate to see in terms of duration of use of an acid blocker. So for in a more recent study, it was shown that individuals in a group of individuals that were on acid blockers for a week, that for seven days, that just under 10% of those individuals developed small intestinal bacterial overgrowth. And so from that point forward, as you stay on those longer, the probability increases that you're going to develop that small intestinal bacterial overgrowth. And interestingly enough, many, many years ago, I remember looking at a study and it actually was doing characterizations of different types of small intestinal bacterial overgrowth. And one of the characterizations was a PPI induced SIBO. So proton pump inhibitor induced small intestinal bacterial overgrowth. So it is certainly a risk factor for this overproliferation of bacteria in the small intestine. So wanted to wanted to share that with you, give you insight into the risks that are associated here. And you you likely knew that there were risks. And again, the idea is that you're not looking to use these things long term, but the longer term that you do have to use these things, the important thing to take away from this conversation is that you need to take actions to try to offset that development of small intestinal bacterial overgrowth. The last thing you want to do is take a take an acid blocker to try to decrease symptoms in your gastrointestinal tract only to turn around and have the development of other symptoms manifest in association with that that you could potentially offset and also remedy these nutrient deficiencies that are known to to occur with use of these uh with use of these medications as well so hopefully those are some tools that you can uh, implement and that'll give you some ideas about how to maintain the health of your gastrointestinal tract long term until next time guys come back see me again and we'll talk soon take care